And hello, internets. It is Lars. And as you can see, I am joined by a man who doesn't really need introduction, I don't think, because of the laundry list of Copper, Adelia's Way, currently in Breaking Benjamin, now doing his solo stuff. But I'm paid to do the intro stuff. So Keith Wallen joining us. Keith, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Obviously, we're going to talk about the solo stuff, and I really want to get into that process. But I want to start by asking you about a tweet you had a couple days ago, I think it was. Because you were able to see an otter doing something that people normally don't. Because people think of otter, they think cute, cuddly, finding Dory cuddle party. You saw an otter as a straight up killer. I did. Uh, you know, but even even still, though, it was still cute. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We were uh, me and my wife, we were walking uh, on this uh, this kind of walking path uh, over here. And uh, we saw this this couple of people walking by us. They're like, hey, you know, there's an otter up ahead. And I'm like, come on, I can't be this lucky. I know right. by the time we get there, that thing is going to be like a ghost. It's going to be gone. Uh, and sure enough, we saw the otter and it was sitting there eating a fish. And it was incredible. I'm like, man, I'm seeing this in the wild. This is amazing. Yeah. So besides nature photography, Obviously, the other things that you've been doing music wise, the solo album that you've been working on, take us through that process because you know you've been in in groups before. You were the lead singer for your, your band Copper. You've also written for other bands. What's it like now just doing Keith Wall and stuff? Uh, you know, it's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I've uh, I've you know been been doing the whole music thing for a while and and singing and. Um, you know, it, it seemed like just kind of a, a natural thing, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, music that I've, I've written that kind of really wasn't quite the right fit, uh, with breaking band. So I was like, ah, let's just start putting this stuff out and, and just have fun with it. You know, it's been, it's been kind of, kind of liberating and, and free to just kind of, you know, make music for the fun of it. And, um, you know, obviously if, if people, you know, like it and appreciate it, I mean, all the better. So, uh, but I, I would definitely eventually like to get out there and, and play some shows um, solo uh, <laughs> at some point, you know, once, uh, once it's all safe and uh, right. safe. To do, so. how, how do you then in the process, how do you know a song may not be right for a band and it's more right for just you on your own as an artist? How do you just get that feeling? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I think when, whenever, uh, you know, in terms of breaking Benjamin music, you know, we, we kind of have a, a definite sound, you know, and, and we try to we try to do justice uh, in, in writing things that uh, that kind of have that kind of mood and and, and vibe. Um, you know, with my stuff, it's it's you know, I'm kind of across the board. You know, there's there's been more chill out kind of tunes. There's been kind of alternative stuff. And, you know, it, all the bands I've been in has been, you know, have been pretty much rock bands. So right. uh, that was kind of the natural next thing to do was just kind of do some more rock stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it really, it's, it's, um, you know, I, I write about anything and everything, um, you know, personal stuff, uh, relationships. I mean, even, uh, I, I love movies. I'm a huge movie buff, okay. and, uh, nice. you know, that, that kind of thing is always super inspiring to me. Just the imagery. I mean, um, you know, all the science fiction, Blade Runner, Star Wars, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, um, that stuff is really inspiring to me and, and it can kind of, uh, I don't know, start me up in a, in a mood and I'll just kind of roll with it. And then I'll be like, okay, let's, let's record some ideas. And eventually it'll, it'll turn into a song and, and uh, yeah. So. Nice. Uh, the fact that you're a, a, a movie buff, I love because one of the questions I like to ask people is like, if you could have a sound, uh, a song on a soundtrack, what, what movie would it be? And what scene would you want that song to be playing in? Like, what would that Man. be? Oh man. Uh like a genre, like you said science fiction. Would you like like if, if you want if you had a song, you want it like as someone's chasing somebody down, or do you want more of an intense battle scene? Like what what would you envision? Gosh, I don't know. That's that's tough, you know. Um it's it's really um I'm trying to think of some of my songs, like what what kind of scene would they be suitable for? 
uh, gosh, you, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Hans Zimmer and all the stuff oh, he's done with, nice. with uh, Christopher Nolan. Like, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I just thought of that scene in Interstellar um, when they're trying to when they're trying to kind of like join that ship and, and, oh, and yeah. that, that score from Hans Zimmer is so amazing. Uh, and even when they land on the like the water planet and they see that huge just mountain of water coming and, yeah. oh, and the music hits and I'm just <laughs> Get to but, jack, uh, like that, I, you would like to point to the screen, be like, "That's me. That's my music right up there, right now." Oh folks. yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. He, he is, uh, yeah, he is a master of it. You know, um, I, mine would probably be, you know, obviously because mine's not as symphonic. You know, right. it's, it's, yeah. you know, there's lyrics and me right. singing and stuff. But uh, I don't know. It, it that's a tough question. I've never been asked that, but uh, it'd be it'd be definitely a fun kind of uh, project to work on. Definitely. You speaking about, you know, you're, you're singing, playing music. Uh, you got the guitar handy to maybe uh, play us a tune right now. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, which one would you like to play for? Obviously we all know, uh, dream away. Is that the one you like to play or, or are you one of those guys that sometimes like I play that so often I, I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I wish I could say that, but, uh, I hardly ever play it, uh, just because, you know, we're all stuck at home. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll play that one. And, um, and then maybe another one afterwards. Uh, but yeah, by the way, uh, thank you guys so much for all the support and for playing uh, this song. Um, it really is amazing. Uh, and, and all the fans that, that, uh, you know, that check it out on the air and stuff. I love it. It's amazing. Well, we're, we're glad to have you You're taking your time and be able to share your talents with us, man. We really appreciate that too. Hell yeah, man. Um, so uh, I guess it's always awkward starting. It's always like, okay, and then it do gets I, quiet. How many of you like we're actually at a concert? Be like, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, please give it up for Keith Wallen. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, that even makes me more nervous. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to just laugh. All right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Out on the colder side of the moon Seeking a way to get back to you Waking up to a never-ending life I just need to close my eyes I just need to close my eyes And dream away of a new Life. Try to forget my worries for a while And I used to lay in my own mind Nothing matters but to feel alive Out on the colder side of the moon Carry a name, it's all I can do. Dark abyss comes through my line of sight. I just need to close my eyes. I just need to close my eyes and dream away of a new life. Try to forget my worries for a while. And I used to lay in my own mind Nothing matters but to feel Worries for a while. 
And I used to lay in my own bed. Nothing matters but to feel alive. And dream away. And dream away. And dream away. And dream away. Where's the, yeah, man. I didn't even get my phone out, like pretending to be a lighter. Really give you that live feel. I, that was <laughs> awesome, Keith. That 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 is uh, that is very cool stuff, man. I have to ask you, as as a guy who's been in a band for as long as you have, being off the road for as long as you have, what has that been like to not have that live experience with a crowd that you kind of feed off of that gives you that energy? Depressing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I. Uh... I feel like I, I'm pretty close to just putting some mattresses up on all the walls and needing a straight jacket, man. It really is. It's like a, it's like a slow, um, depression. It sucks, mm -hmm. man. I'm so, I'm so ready for, for things to get, uh, get back, uh, you know, to some sense of normalcy. Uh, one thing that's helped is, is, you know, it's warming up. It's starting to, you know, uh, it's springtime, yeah. summer's around the corner. You know, I've been I've been trying to get out in nature and fish and camp. And so uh, that's really helped a lot. You know, has, so. has all of that hindered the creative process then? Or has it allowed you to be more introspective in your creative process when you're crafting the songs? How's it affected the songwriting process for you then? Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, really affected that. I mean, um, you know, one, I mean, one thing, it's it's definitely given you a whole lot more time on your hands. Uh, mm -hmm. to work and, and to write. So I, I think, you know, in that aspect, it's, it's helped. Um, but as far as, um, you know, inspirations, um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I would say that, uh, you know, you kind of, uh, at least in, in, in my case, you know, you, you try to, uh, you know, take advantage of, of all those, those feelings of isolation and just try to just, you know, put it into the music and, and, um, you know, guys, we're, I mean, we're all, we're all kind of going through this thing. Um, it's been just, I don't know. It's yeah. been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, that, that's one way to put it. You could have used stronger language around the internet. So like, we don't need to hit the dump button. Yeah. So, I mean, you I've, used <laughs> I've, trained, I've, I've trained myself to, uh, right. yeah, to avoid bad words. Yes. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, you talk about inspiration. Growing up, who are some of the people that drew you to music? Some of the people that you look to, uh, whether it influenced just, you know, the style of music or whether it be songwriters that you kind of look to like, damn, those are people I aspire to be. Yeah, uh, well, my uh, my father, um, my dad, he was a he was a singer um, in the 60s and, uh, you know, almost almost had like a little career there going. Um, and so growing up, he was always listening to music. He, he was always listening to, to Frank Sinatra. It was, it was that kind of music. It was, okay. it was what Very he nice. did. Crooner. Nice. Crooner style. Very uh, nice. Yeah. It's so, um, you know, so I was kind of, I was kind of uh, subjected to it at a young age, which, uh, which was awesome. And, uh, you know, to this day, I still absolutely love Frank Sinatra. Um, so that was, that was something that I, I really tried to, uh, Kind of soak up and and i really looked up to him and his his talent he was so talented mm -hmm. um and and you know eventually i kind of started to get into uh you know guitar and rock music and and bands and stuff and uh, i was i was a huge metallica fan uh so anything you know james hatfield i mean i was just you know that's like right. one of my one of my all-time heroes um so yeah you know and i really i loved all the all the Seattle bands, you know, Alice in Chains and uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Nirvana, all that stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, and I still I still look up to uh, all those bands that that just just came before all of us, you know, and really paved the way. And I mean, even going back as, you know, Led Zeppelin and stuff like that, I, I, I love it all. So I was going to say, you got some heavyweights, man. So you're like Sinatra, Metallica, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, man, those those yeah. are some heavy hitters, man. Those are some good guys to aspire and to and to look up to. What was the moment for you when you're like, "All right, 
I've, I've made it now. When you looked out, whatever venue or crowd it was, what was that one that moment where you're like, hell yeah, th this is where I was meant to do. Th this is what I've always strived for. Yeah, I mean, I don't really even consider, uh, I don't know, I don't, you know, when you think about the term made it, you know, well, I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily feel, you know, because I still feel like, Constantly uh, evolving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, evolving. I'm still I'm still hungry, you know, as an artist. I, I still feel like I have something to say and I, I, I want to get out there and play music. And, and um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's just a lot of that is just the love of it, you know. Yeah. But um, I mean, there's every day. I mean, to answer your question more specifically, every day that I'm able to get up on stage and play songs for uh for a crowd or you know with my with my friends it, it's that's that's making it in my opinion um so yeah i i don't i try not to take it for granted and uh we were talking about this uh in in one of my other interviews it was it was kind of like you know you can't help but take it for granted a little bit now that it's gone you know touring right you know, yeah. and hopefully and hopefully it's on the way back here soon you know i feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel but um, you know, you never would I had ever expected, like, you know, no yeah, one I, is going to be touring, you know, I'm like, what? Right. Yeah. Like, Someone huh? told me that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I, you know, so that you, you do, you, you take it for granted. And, and, um, but, um, I really try not to, even before all this stuff, you know, I, I'm, you know, pinching myself, even just walking into some venues and every time we you know we show up at a place, I walk in, I'm just like, I can't believe I'm here, you know. So, is there one in particular venue that really kind of you're you're kind of awestruck by, or is it uh, vary on depending on where you're at? Yeah, I mean, not really, not really. You know, uh, um, every one of them is special to me. Um, it's it's nice. uh, it's it really is just a blessing to be able to, um, you know, get out there and see the country and see the world and 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 to play music. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's incredible. And and it's funny because, you know, there's another kind of reason why I, I try and uh, stay active with the songwriting and work on the solo stuff is because, you know, there's going to be a time where, you know, uh, I'm not going to be able to sing or I'm not going to be able to play guitar like I can now or whatever. Right. And I don't want to look back and be like, man, if only I would just really, you know, worked and really right. kept on, you know, kept at it. So. I have that voice in my head that's just like, you know, you're constantly. Gonna regret. Oh, yeah. Constantly going, constantly going. You're like, you're like, sometimes like just not. I'm trying to get some sleep, voice. Quit, quit, push. But <laughs> because inspiration comes at any time, right? I mean, there, you can get struck with a, a, just a thought for a song at any moment. For sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, and just, you know, just um, why not? Why not put out as much stuff as you can, you know, oh. while you can. So. And I, I will ask, has technology been able to help you to do that? Because now it becomes much easier to record things because you can do it at home rather than trying to find open studio time and getting in there and trying to work within that restriction. Now you can kind of make the song grow organically because you have the opportunity to record whatever you want. Definitely. Um, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, technology has really helped, you know, um, even just as far as just you know, home studio stuff, like you were saying, you know, a lot of people just have a whole, you know, studio suite, you know, Pro Tools, whatever, just on their laptop. And, uh, you know, that's what I do. I just, I have it on my laptop and, and I have it set up here at home and I also bring it on tour uh, for working on stuff on the road. So it's definitely helped. And plus just, you know, writing with different people, you know, you can do Zoom sessions with people and it's like right. being in the room. I mean, it's not quite the same, you know, but uh, it's better than, better than nothing so right <laughs> better than trying to like write all the notes while on a cell phone like holding up to your ear i mean it's much <laughs> easier when your hands are free just to be able to do whatever uh, oh yeah absolutely and you're working towards the solo album uh can you discuss when it we may see the full album come out or is that like under lock and key or no i actually uh so what we we finally just locked it in we've been um you know trying to get everything in order and get all the artwork and all that stuff uh finished and uh so august 13th is when the album is going to be coming out yeah friday the 13th august 13th yeah very very nice well with with that release date maybe we have a song to go in a friday the 13th movie as jason's like chasing something <laughs> down 
There we go. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be cool with that. Uh, do you want to play a, another song for us from the album, possibly, or what do you got for sure, us? Man. Sure. Yeah. Let me uh, let me tune up here. Uh, the, the, yeah, I, I said this in the other one, just the tuning song. So bear with me here. Oh no, that's fine. It's like we're live once again. It's like a live concert. Like, you know, but this time you don't have the roadie coming out with the guitar that's already tuned for you. You got to do it yourself. Yeah, it's like three songs. I'm playing three songs. Yeah, exactly. You get the tuning song in between. I like it. All right, I think I got it. All right. So uh, what, what do you got for us this time? <clears throat> so this is a song called uh, Crows. I I put this song out maybe a, a few years ago. Um, yeah. Nice. Here it goes. All right. <laughs> You say you don't care about the world Is there something inside of you Keeping faith in the human race When better days come We're not here to start a war Torn and tired and thrown away But if hollow behavior Woo! Woo! 
on, go on. <laughs> awesome, man. Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin. Also got the solo album coming out. Uh, now we know for sure, Friday, August 13th. Uh, you mentioned your affinity for Star Wars early on in the interview. Jedi or Sith, which one would you be? Oh, man. Uh, See the green uh, light in the background. Now it's churning to yellow and now red. You got yeah. all of it right there, man. You're like Ray. Yeah, I would say I'd say a little mix of both. I like it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> fav favorite one of the Star Wars movies? Oh, gosh. I'm a huge uh, Star Wars nerd. So, like, anytime I can talk Star Wars with someone, I'm going to. I mean, probably Empire Strikes Back. That, that's, that's the one everyone seems to go to because it's just such a damn good movie. Yeah, it's great. I mean, plus the big, you know, reveal at the yeah. end. You know, you can't beat that. Speaking of reveals at the end, have you watched Mandalorian at all? I um, have. Okay. Spoiler alert to everyone else out. And it, you should have watched it by now. I, I don't think we spoiled anything. Did you think the individual who came for Grogu was going to be that certain individual? Do you think Luke Skywalker was going to make that appearance? Because I didn't know. And then he showed up. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I, I really didn't. I wasn't sure. Um and I felt like they should have got Sebastian Stan yes. to play the young Luke Skywalker because I felt like the the digital thing. I mean, it, it looked like him, but it just looks weird still. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, it's like I'm close, like but so I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stop, you know, looking at that. I was just like, that looks weird to me. <laughs> but it's cool though. I mean, it is. I, I thought it was an awesome kind of ending and. Reveal, yeah, like you said, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't get enough of it. I, I hope they do more. I'm looking forward to the the Book of Fett later on this year. Has there been any other shows you've been like binge watching or passing, uh, helping you pass the time through this whole weird situation? You know, uh, funny you should say that because yes, and I am probably the last dude to get on this train, uh, but Breaking Bad. I don't know if uh, if you're a Breaking Bad guy. Here's the thing. I'm like you. I still haven't seen it. Okay. So oh. I watched season one like uh, a long time ago. Okay. Um, and I kind of just, I was like, ah, I kind of lost interest in, you know, the seasons went through. I never, I never did watch it again. And I recently just like came back to it like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And dude, I am obsessed. It is, it is incredible so i highly recommend going back and watching breaking bad it's okay. amazing okay. so the first season a little slow but then it'll pick up and i'll just be hooked from that i mean even the first season has parts where you're just like uh you know there's there's those type of shows that you're just constantly living in anxiety watching it you're just like oh my god <laughs> this is one of those shows where you're like you know, I, I definitely shouldn't drink coffee before I watch this because <laughs> I'm not going to go to bed. <laughs> nice. All right. But, uh, but yeah, it's great, man. Okay. I, I appreciate it. I'll have to check it out now. Yeah, everyone else says it. I don't, I don't, I don't care about them. Keith Wallen says, watch it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, right on. Keith, appreciate your time. Uh, where can people find you on the socials? And what's obviously you got the this, this solo album coming out August 13th, but what's next for you? What's next for Breaking Benjamin? What's uh, what's new going forward? Yeah, um, well, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're still waiting to get, um, you know, waiting to things, waiting for things to get yeah. back to normal. Like I said, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Looks to be some some festivals that have been announced. So, so hopefully we can get out there soon and, um, um yeah and i mean as far as like new music you know there's going to be new music for me as far as breaking benjamin um i don't have a timeline but i mean we're always we're always writing new new songs and new music and stuff so hopefully soon we can get uh, we can get going on that but uh yeah all the social stuff you can find me on instagram twitter facebook all that my my handle is at kj wallen for instagram and twitter and it's just my name for facebook and uh and i'm on youtube subscribe do all the things. Click, click that like button, subscribe, yeah. hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Absolutely. There's there's <laughs> lots there's lots of things on the way. Even before the album drops, there's going to be uh, a lot of songs coming out. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Lars, so much, man, for Thank having you, me. Keith. Yeah, and I'll, I'll keep looking for those otter photos in case you get another chance to run <laughs> over one of them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. Keith Wall, appreciate it. New out of the solo album comes out August 13th. Uh, best of luck going forward, and I uh, hope to talk to you when we get close to the album release. Uh, thank you, man. Looking forward to it.